All right, welcome back everyone. Today we're going to show you how to make a visor and this is a really simple project. It doesn't take much fabric at all and if you're looking for supplies as in buckles or brims, go to capsupplyco.com. They have everything you need. But other than that, let's just get started. All right, we're using a pattern that we made. This a pattern will be available in the description below, a link to it. And make sure if you use this pattern, cut on the outside of the black line. And then you get it cut out. Just trace it on and make sure for your back panel, you place that on the fold because that's going to be one long strip. And we already went ahead and traced ours, so we're just going to cut it out. So you're going to end up with one front panel, two sides, and then the back. And then don't forget to cut your fabric out for your brim. And we're choosing to use a different fabric and we already pre-cut ours, but we just cut a, a rectangle out for your brim, decent size, and you should be good with that. In this pattern, you can just buy a half a yard if you want. You can get less than that, but a half a yard just in case you mess up. And that's Plenty of fabric for this project. All right, so the first part, you're gonna to wanna to take your front panel and your two side panels. And we went and put interfacing on our front panel only. And if you're looking for, you can just iron this on. If you're looking for professional interfacing for doing hats, um, go to capsupplyco.com. It just looks like this and you can iron that on and it adds for a really good support for the front. If you can't buy that or don't want to, you can always double up on your front panel with the fabric. And then, so anyways, we're gonna start by taking one of your sides and the pattern marks where the tops are on when you're cutting it out. So if you wanna do a little chalk mark on all your tops, I would recommend that. But, so we're gonna take your side and your front panel, put the right sides together and just sew that edge right there. And then do the same thing for the other side. quarter inch seam allowance and that's what this pattern calls for. Alright so now we're on the double needle sewing machine and you don't need an industrial double needle for this part. It's We're only top stitching these two front seams right here and you can do this on a domestic sewing machine. Just get a twin needle and top stitch because you, you're not going to see the back of this so you don't need bias tape. We just have this set up like this and we, we're not going to tear it down right now just to show you this part. So we'll just go ahead and sew this.
And what you're looking for is just to get a nice clean top stitch there. And you do not need this bias tape on the back because again, that's going to be covered up anyways. That's for doing other baseball caps. All right, so now we're going to take our back that we cut on the fold and our front that we just finished up and we're going to take the put the right sides together and remember to put mark your tops. This is our top of the back and you're going to want to just put the right sides together and sew just along the top right now. When you have the top sewn across, you're going to want to then sew up your sides and then stop after that. Now, I'm going to trim that corner just a little bit. Because we'll be turning this inside out and that just makes it easier to get a nice square edge there. All right, so once you have your corners folded outwards as much as you want, we, we made ours nice and pointy with that little snip, you're gonna then sew across this top, and we're gonna be using a top stitching presser foot. It helps guide it through, like when you press it up against there, it gives a nice flush edge, and that's what you're gonna wanna do all the way across. And if you don't have one of those, you can just also use the magnetic snap that works as well. All right, then we went ahead and surged along the bottom just to attach the front and the back panels. And you don't, if you don't have a serger, you don't need to do this. You can use that zigzag stitch on a domestic that works just as well. It's just to prevent from, from fraying and clean it up along the bottom. All right, we went ahead and traced our brim onto the fabric and you're gonna to wanna to go down just a little more just to create that a nice sleeve to slide your brim into.
you're gonna wanna leave about a quarter of an inch, if not a little more, on, on the edge there. Makes it easier to slide the brim into. Once you have your brim in the sleeve, then you're gonna want to seal off the back. And to do this best, we found using a zipper presser foot really gets you close along the edge of the brim. Alright, now to do the stitching on top of the rim, we're using a stitch guide and these are going to be soon available on capsupplyco.com. If you're looking for one, they're going to fit industrial sewing machines. There's not really one to use for a domestic at the moment. We're trying to figure that out. So, what you because it's adjust and you can get all your different stitches in there and we're just going quarter inch. All right, so now we went ahead and marked the center of our front panel and also the center of our brim, the back of it. And if you order your brims from capsuleco.com, they have a little notch that marks the center and that's really helpful. So what you're gonna wanna do is match those up. And we like to, the easiest way we find to make sure this is fully centered is to start in the middle and then go outwards. So we put our zipper presser foot back on there to get really close to that edge and then we're going to go from the middle to the outside edge. All right, so now we're gonna put on the sweatband and this axis at the end, you can cut that off. Leave yourself a little bit just to help put on that sweatband. Then we are on a post bed sewing machine right now and you don't need this to put a sweatband on, we just have it here. So we're gonna show you this method and later in the future, we, if you request it, we can show you how to put sweatbands on without a post bed. It's just what we do if you're looking to do more production, you're gonna wanna get a post bed, it just helps with the whole process. Also the sweatbands, they're available at capsupplyco.com. I highly recommend using a professional sweatband because it just makes for a better fitting hat at the end.
All right, so now we are gonna close off, and we're gonna put a closure on, and there's a bunch of different options to choose from. We are gonna go with the leather and the gunmetal buckle, and this is a 16 millimeter buckle. And if you wanna learn how to install any of these other ones, our other videos show how to install all of these, so just check out those. All right, so you're gonna to wanna to take your end, hold the sweatband over, and then just like that, then slide your leather strip into the opening at the end. And don't worry about if there's a little bit sticking out of the sweatband that can be trimmed after. And then for the other side, you just want to close that off. So do the same thing, but don't have anything in there. Once you have your ends closed off, then you're going to want to top stitch all along the front. And the best way to do that is using a presser foot with an edge on it, so you get a nice, accurate, straight stitch. All right, so now we're gonna show you how to install the buckle. And we went ahead and punched our hole already. And make sure wherever you place your strap that your buckle is gonna be aligned with that or else it's gonna be offset. So just, we, ours is in the center, so we put our buckle directly in the center. If you want more information on the dies and all that, you can check out our other videos that are dedicated to just this process. You know, or go to capsupplyco.com, they have everything there you need. And then for the oval eyelet, just go in a little bit and cut yourself a slit. And there's dies for the oval eyelets, but this is how to do them without a die. Top half in that slit. So you have it flipped over. Put your back aligned with the front. You want to take a flathead screwdriver and bend the sides over. And you can't really see it that great because the you can trim all that up after. But all this can be trimmed up and it's better to have a little in there so the eyelet has something to hold on to.
All right, the last part is super important. It's steaming it, and this is gonna make the hat look really professional afterwards. It's gonna make that sweatband nice and flush on the inside, and you're gonna definitely wanna do this. You can either steam it, or if you have an iron with a steamer on it, that works too. We just have a standard little steamer that you can buy at any store, and it works just as good, but if, if you're trying to do a big professional run, you're gonna to wanna to look into actually getting molds for this. And this is gonna make that sweatband really nice and not all wrinkly looking. Alright, thanks everyone for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial and found it helpful. If you have any other questions, feel free to leave comments. Make sure you like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Other than that, thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.